Hi, everyone, welcome to my channel again. Today, I am going to share about type 1 and type 2 error, which is an important concept in statistics. Before watching, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Your support will encourage me to produce more videos related to Lean Six Sigma and Operation Management. The statistical inference process involves the use of a known sample statistic to arrive at a judgment about an unknown population. Parameter. Because we are relying on a sample, we expose ourselves to the risk that our conclusions about the population will be wrong. The risk of error is labeled as type 1 and type 2 error. What is type 1 error? Type 1 error is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. The probability of making a type 1 error is known as alpha. Alpha is also known as the level of significance. Alpha is the risk of finding a difference but in fact no difference. Traditionally, you control the probability of a type 1 error by deciding the risk level alpha you are willing to tolerate of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. Because you specify the level of significance before performing the hypothesis test, the risk of committing a type 1 error, alpha, is directly under your control. The most common alpha values are 0.01, 0.05, and 0.10, in researchers. Traditionally select a value of 0.05 or smaller. What is type 2 error? Type 2 error is the probability of failed to reject the null hypothesis when it is false. The probability of making a type 2 error is known as beta. Beta is the risk of finding no difference but in fact, a difference exists. Then the probability of rejecting a false null hypothesis is 1 minus beta, which is called the power of the test. The probability of a type 2 error depends on the size of the difference between the value of the population parameter stated in the null hypothesis and the actual population value. Unlike the type 1 error, the type 2 error is not directly established by you. The probability of a type 2 error, beta depends on the size of the effect, that is, the difference between the true and the hypothesized population parameter. The smaller the effect, the higher the probability of a type 2 error and the lower the probability of a correct decision. As the difference between the value of the population parameter stated in the null hypothesis and its corresponding population parameter increases, the probability of a type 2 error decreases. Therefore, if the difference between the values of the population parameter stated in the null hypothesis and the corresponding parameter is small, the probability of a type 2 error will be large. The arithmetic complement of beta, 1 minus beta, is known as the power of the test and represents the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is false and should be rejected. The types of errors and their associated risks are summarized in table. The table summarizes the possible types of error. We define type 1 error as the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. The probability of failing to reject the null hypothesis when it is true is 1 minus alpha. We also have another possible error, called a type 2 error, that arises when we fail to reject a false null hypothesis. For a particular decision rule, the probability of making such an error when the null hypothesis is false will be denoted as beta. Then the probability of rejecting a false null hypothesis is 1 minus beta, which is called the power of the test. A factory manager is trying to determine if the population mean package weight is greater than the package label weight. The null hypothesis is that the population, the mean package weight is equal to the label weight of 16 ounces. This null hypothesis is tested against the alternative hypothesis that the mean package weight is greater than 16 ounces. 
To test the hypothesis, we obtain an independent random sample of serial packages and compute the sample mean. If the sample mean is substantially larger than 16 ounces, the null hypothesis is rejected. Otherwise, we will not reject the null hypothesis. Let mu denote the sample mean. Then, a possible decision rule is as follows. Reject null hypothesis if sample mean greater than 16.13. Now, suppose that the null hypothesis is true. We could still find that the sample mean is greater than 16.13, and, according to our decision rule, the null hypothesis would be rejected. In that case we would have committed a type 1 error. By contrast, suppose that the null hypothesis is false and that the population mean package weight is greater than 16. We could still find that the sample mean was less than 16.13, and, according to our decision rule, the null hypothesis would not be rejected. Thus, a type 2 error would have occurred. The probabilities of the two types of errors have an inverse relationship. When you decrease alpha, you always increase beta and when you decrease beta, you always increase alpha. One way in which you can lower beta without affecting the value of alpha is to increase the size of the sample. Larger sample sizes generally permit you to detect even very small differences between the hypothesized and actual values of the population parameter. For a given level of alpha, increasing the sample size will decrease beta and therefore, increase the power of the test to detect that the null hypothesis is false. In establishing a value for alpha, you need to consider the negative consequences of a type 1 error. If these consequences are substantial, you can set alpha equals 0.01 instead of 0.05 and tolerate the greater beta that results. If the negative consequences of a type 2 error most concern you, you can select a larger value for alpha, for example, 0.05 rather than 0.01 and benefit from the lower beta that result. Random thought ideally, we would like the values of alpha and beta to be as small as possible. However, for a given sample size, reducing the value of alpha will result in an increase in the value of beta. The opposite also holds true. The only way to reduce both alpha and beta simultaneously is to increase the sample size. Once the sample size has been increased to the size of the population, the values of alpha and beta will be zero. However, this is not a recommended strategy. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Bye. See you next time.